Thank you for joining me. I'm in the book of Genesis chapter 6. After I completed reading through the wisdom literature this time, I, I went back and began again in the book of Genesis, in the historical book that way. Now, in my particular uh, system, and you should do your system, not mine, but in my particular system, I'm I recognize that a very large portion, the largest portion actually, of the Old Testament is the historical narratives from Genesis all the way to Ezra. And so many times as I am reading through it, I find myself in two of those particular passages, and that's where I am right now. Uh, I am work, I'm in the book of 2 Samuel, so I'm well more than halfway through, but I'm also in the book of Genesis and plodding my way through the whole of that again. And so in this particular time, I find myself in Genesis chapter 6. You may recognize that as that passage that says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, Noah was a man who was specifically chosen by God to take, uh, to take and build an ark because there was, as it says here in verse, uh, verse 11, there was violence in this particular world. The earth was corrupt, it says, in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. Now, I'm not quite sure how, you, how much you follow the news reports these days, but we've got violence in our world in Northern and Eastern Europe. We've got violence in our world in the Middle East. There is violence in uh, many parts of Africa these days. There is violence in uh, parts of South America. There is violence in the streets of North America. And we recognize those. Our newspapers and our news feeds are filled with reports of that violence that's in our world. And in Luke chapter 17, Jesus says in the same way that there was, uh, that, that, that people were living in the time of Noah, that's the way it will be when I return. So when we see that violence, we recognize that it was because of the corruption and the violence that was in the earth in the time of Noah that God told Noah to build that ark and he was going to bring judgment. And of course, Noah was able to survive uh, with, uh, with all of the animals and, uh, or many of the animals, I should say, that had been created. And he and his family were survivors of the, uh, the judgment in the time of the flood. There's gonna be another judgment. Our world is just as violent. It is just as corrupt. All you have to do is to look at the, uh, at the political world we live in. Uh, whether it's in the West or whether it's in the East, there is corruption in all of these different places. And we're not going to escape the judgment that God was bringing, that God brought upon the people in the time of Noah any more than they did. There is, there is all of the uh, judgment that he brought on Sodom and Gomorrah for the homosexuality of those people there. And we have the same thing in our particular day. We in this time need to be aware that God, while he is merciful, while he abounds in mercy, he is rich in mercy in the words of the Apostle Paul, yet... He can by no means clear the guilty. Sometimes we say that if God continues to uh, let these things uh, go and does not come in judgment, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Of course, that's going to be a, uh, that, that's just an exaggeration. But nonetheless, there is some truth to that. We need to recognize that the world we live in is just as vile, just as corrupt, just as violent as it was in the time of Noah when, when God brought judgment there. And so it's, it, it behooves us 
It is our urgent message to take the name of Jesus to every creature. Later on in the New Testament, Noah is called a preacher of righteousness. And even though we don't see that in the text of Genesis 6, we recognize that all the time he's building that ark, he's, tell, excuse me, he's telling people judgment is coming. And so we need also to be warning people, not, in a, not, not, not to uh, create fear only in their hearts, but let them see the compassion and the mercy that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. I trust that as we look at this world, we will say to the people around us, make sure you're ready for the judgment that's coming. Father, thank you for that mercy. You are rich in mercy, and we acknowledge that we are just corrupt people but we acknowledge also that you are the true and living God and you have provided for us a way of escape if we will take advantage of it. And I pray that many would, many would. The people in my circle would take advantage of it. So work in each of us, Father, to be faithful, to proclaim the mercy and the grace of Jesus in his name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have